As the suffocating fungus crept towards them, Bleep and Booster tried desperately to think of a means of escape. Let's make a dash for the highest rock, said Booster. But that too will soon be covered with the creeping fungus. Wait a minute. What about our jetpacks? They're in their protective holders, so they may not be contaminated. You are right. It is our one hope of escape. We'll have to hurry, said Booster, as they struggled to undo the holders. Fortunately, the jetpacks seemed to be uncontaminated and in perfect working order. And the boys stood by for takeoff. Three, two, one, zero! Hand in hand, Bleep and Booster propelled themselves into the unknown darkness, leaving the creeping fungus far behind them. As they drifted through space, Bleep checked his multiplexer gauge. We cannot possibly reach Myron before our fuel runs out. We must find a friendly star and someone to help us. But Booster didn't reply. Above the noise of the jetpacks, he could hear another, more sinister sound that seemed to be coming nearer and nearer. Look out! We're being intercepted! Above their heads, they could see the lights of a spacecraft, and every second it was gaining on them. Too late! The giant brain has found us! The spacecraft hovered above them, and Bleep and Booster knew that this time there could be no possible escape. As they looked upwards, a panel in the side of the craft opened to reveal a communication system. Myron, module 5. Myron, module 5. Identify immediately. Who are you? Bleep and Booster couldn't believe their ears. It's us, cried Booster. Please save us, called Bleep. Immediately, a lifeline was lowered from Module 5, and inch by inch, the boys were hauled to safety. Once inside, the crew crowded round them, eager to hear their story. When they heard about the giant brain and the terrible white rays, the pilot said, We will use your fungus star as a launch pad for our attack. The rescue fleet is close at hand, and their Delta disintegrators will soon deal with the creeping menace. Module 5 changed course. Once again, Bleep and Booster were heading for the star of the creeping fungus. The module travelled through space far faster than the jetpacks, so the journey was not a long one. On his navigation screens, the pilot could already see the lichen-covered rocks and boulders of the surface. He prepared for landing. The communications officer flashed coded signals to the rescue fleet to warn them of the new rendezvous. Stand by for landing! appeared at the observation scanner. One corner was dotted with dozens of small bright lights. That is the rescue fleet approaching. Soon it will be here. But will it be soon enough? Look at the fungus! Outside, the fungus was creeping slowly up the stabilizers. Soon the whole of Module 5 would be enveloped. At that very moment, the Myron fleet roared overhead and hovered close to the module. From the hatch of the leading craft, a box-like device appeared, carrying a spaceman. From it, three thin metallic legs extended to form a giant tripod. It looks just like a spider, said Booster. What's it going to do? That is not the only one, said Bleep. Dozens of spider boxes were being lured from the hovering rescue fleet. As they landed, they began to move, picking up their long supporting legs clear above the seething fungus. With great precision, they halted, forming a close-packed group. 
glowing metal plates shot out from each box. And immediately, all the Myron spider units were linked together as one vast fighting machine. The commander of the leading craft gave a signal. Searing rays from the Delta disintegrators scorched through the deadly moss. And within seconds, the lichen began to smolder and burn. Then, the flames died down leaving only blackened, smouldering rocks. The deadly menace of the creeping fungus had been destroyed. Module 5 was free. Oh, said Booster inside the spacecraft. That was close. Yes, and now we must rescue my father, said Bleep. And the pilot agreed that the Myron rescue fleet should set off at once. He turned to the controls and was just starting the countdown for launching when suddenly the magnetrode went dead. As a terrifying voice enveloped the module, the crew froze with horror. I am waiting for you, men from Myron. I am the giant brain, the all-powerful. My deadly rays will destroy you all. Men from Myron, beware.